Hey there, Heather Boyd here, and today I'm going to give you a little intro into what materials you're going to need to do watercolor. Now next Saturday I'm going to do a live stream demo, and if you have all the materials we can paint together. And if you're watching this after the fact, I'll link up that video below. So here's a sampler of what we're going to be exploring on the live stream coming up on Saturday. And so there's different techniques that you can do with watercolors to create different uh, textures and patterns and things like that. And the project we'll be doing is to do a leaf. So I want to get you uh, started to know with all the materials you're going to need for the project. If you already have a palette of watercolors, that's fine. This is a really fun one. This is Stuart Semple. This is an artist that created his own colors and um, you see I haven't cleaned my palette there but these come in little solid blocks like this and this is my preferred way of using watercolor uh, when they're already like nice in the hard blocks like that and then you add water to them so what I will do is show you what I usually work with this set was a gift from my dear friend and so what you would do is you can buy the watercolors in tubes, but you don't use them directly from the tube. Because if you put these on your palette and wet them, they're going to uh, get diluted very quickly and you're going to waste a lot of paint. So what you can do is get a small palette like this from the art store. And I have different sizes. You can get a larger one like this and then you would put your colors in there. This looks like a traditional palette. This is the one I prefer. It's portable but it's a decent size. You can see it's a big mess. I haven't cleaned it. Sometimes I'll clean it up to start fresh but basically what I do is I put my colors into these sections and then you let it air dry. Um, usually just let it dry overnight until they're stiff and then they're ready to use. So I like these whole bean artist watercolors. This is a higher end watercolor. You can also get a student quality watercolors as well from the art store. And basically what I would do is I would just get the get the paint and just like stick it in there and then I would let that dry. Uh, overnight and then they'll be ready to use the next day. So this is the palette I am going to be using on Saturday. This is the palette I use most of the time and I have a list of colors that I like to use so I will put the list of colors in the description. So of course you're going to need your paper. I like to use 140 pound paper. You can also get 90 pound which is thinner or 300 pound which is quite thick but I like the medium weight. You can get it with a texture. Uh, this It's hard to tell, but it's got a bumpy texture to it or the smooth. I personally prefer the smooth one. And what I like to do is you can cut the shape you want and I always tape it down to a board because when you tape it to the board, it has two advantages. One, it makes a nice border around it. And the other thing, when the paper gets wet, it's going to stretch. And so you need to tape it down. And when it dries, it's going to shrink back to its original shape. So I'll show you how I like to cut my paper. I basically just uh, fold it to where I want the cuts. I usually, I buy a large sheet, like about... 24 by 30 type of thing and then what I end up doing is rather than cut it with the scissors or the exacto knife I like to actually just tear it and that way it just makes a nice kind of artsy kind of uh, finish to it so and often when I mount these on uh, greeting cards they have a nice kind of finished. So then you just bend it a few times, increase it, and then very carefully just pull it away like that to cut your paper. Then you're going to take your tape. I'm just using masking tape. You can use a painter's tape and you want to tape it down about quarter inch around the edges. So if I'm going to do two at once, I just do like a quarter inch there and then I just wiggle this one around so it lines up. Sometimes I'll even put six up on a page at once just to be a little more efficient with my tape. 
and also so as one's drawing I could be working on the other one beside it. If your tape is too sticky just put it on your jeans and just like pull it up a few times just to get a little bit of fiber on there so it's not so sticky. That's a little hack and just put it down here like that. You can also just put your tape like that on a piece of paper or cardstock or Bristol board just so it gets a little bit of the sticky part off and then just go ahead and put it on your paper. So this is the my bottom border. Sometimes I like to do my bottom border a little wider and that way when I sign the piece I could sign it on that area. So we're just going to put that one and this one here. I'm just going to rub it a little bit to get a bit of the sticky part off and down here we go. Perfect. So now that's all set up and that way when the paper gets wet it might loosen up and then when it dries it's going to flatten out again. So other things you're going to need for the painting are your brushes. So you can get some different sizes. This is like sort of a more medium size. These you can get specific watercolor brushes at the art store. And so I like to have a few different sizes. I like to have some that are more fine. Uh, these ones in a pinch from the dollar store, you can use some dollar store brushes. This is a funny odd shape. I wouldn't recommend that for watercolor, but if you're desperate, Go ahead. It's good to have a big brush too to wet larger areas. This is a larger size watercolor brush. So yeah, so there's different possibilities. This one is actually a brush I bought years ago to do um, toll painting. So use what you have and if you can get a few good quality brushes at the art store that would be best. Other things you might need is just this is a little shot glass. Sometimes I like to use uh, rubbing alcohol. If you saw the previous video I did about alcohol inks, you can get some lots of really interesting uh, designs with the rubbing alcohol. So I would either pour that into the shot glass or I could pour it into a little squeezy bottle to squeeze out the uh, alcohol. The other thing you can use is coarse salt. This is what I got this at the dollar store. What the coarse salt does is when you add it to your paint when it's still wet it's going to make some really interesting textures. So this is from the coarse salt and this is the texture you're going to get with the alcohol. The other thing we're going to be using during the demo is saran wrap. So you can just get some of this at the dollar store or the um, grocery store and you're just going to need some little pieces of saran wrap and when you crunch it up you're going to get some really cool textures like that. So I'm going to be demonstrating how to do that. Also you might want to have a pencil and eraser. Just an HB pencil is fine. You can also have on hand some paper towel. I actually prefer to use a cloth so I cut up an old towel and I just use that. You can have some q-tips as well and some sponges. So I'm going to put the materials list in the description of this video. I look forward to seeing everybody on the live stream on Saturday. We'll be doing a sampler with a bunch of watercolor techniques and we are going to be doing a funky leaf.